see that? That is a bathtub ring on the boat. It drives me nuts. We fished a tournament last night and got home too late. Didn't get a chance to wash the boat. Good thing I won't be able to see it all day because it would absolutely drive me crazy. But we're here on the river that's near my house. And I got to tell you, it hasn't rained here in about, I don't know, two weeks, maybe three weeks. It hasn't rained forever. This river is absolutely gorgeous. I can tell you from fishing this tournament last night, it is incredibly clear. The clearest I've ever seen it. So I got my son Joel with me today. We got a little test. I'm going to throw a fluke. He's going to throw a floating worm. And we're going to see which one is better, which one produces more fish. I got confidence in his skills. I got confidence in my own skills. I think they're pretty equal, so this will be a good test to see which one is more productive. All right, so we're having our fluke test today, but Joel and I are not stupid. It's first thing in the morning, we're gonna throw some top waters to begin the day. We got this lily pad field here. Joel's throwing a frog. I'm throwing a pop wall right on the edge of it. Oh, missed him. I got popped. It wasn't a big fish, but good hit. Man, he must have slurped. I didn't even hear him. He was right on the edge. Smart man, followed it up with a fluke. Oh, dude, he hit me right here. It was a lot saw in playing his day. It was a Kentucky. Oh. <laughs> They're just swatting at it. It's a lot of little fish. All right, here we go. Not a keeper, but. <laughs> fluke, baby, fluke. Fluke's up one nothing on floating worm. You had your chance, you blew it. It's the thing with these flukes, man. They just, something just doesn't feel right. That's when you gotta set the hook. If you wait till you feel the fish, a lot of times it's too late. That one I really waited on, but most of the time you'll feel him spitting it. You saw him hit it? Yeah, I saw him hit it. There's a few fish right here. I'm gonna throw it right into our shadow, which I hate. Dude, look how long I gave that fish. <laughs> he wouldn't do anything. That's two on the fluke. It felt spongy, and I kept trying to feel anything that made it feel like a fish. You're just swimming with me. Kentucky bass, Kentucky bass. Before it gets late, you think we should make a pass on our good shoreline around the next bend? Look at that, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. All right, on the fluke. Fluke, baby, fluke. That's a good large mouth. And I really let that one fall, Joel, because I was talking to you. <laughs> All right, so Joel and I have kind of gotten a wild hair. My buddy Jeff fished earlier this week and caught a bunch of sockele, crappie, white perch, whatever you want to call them, just tight lining. Now, we don't have our sockele tackle, so Joel is going to drop me off at the launch. I'm going to go run to Academy, get some sockele tackle, and try and catch at least a few of those fish. Kind of a nice midday diversion. All right, so I just dropped my dad off. He's gonna go to Academy and get some stuff for sockleye fishing later. Meanwhile, I'm gonna to see if I can try and catch a couple bass while he's doing that. I'm going to start off with a frog if I can find it. All right, there it is right here. So we're gonna start off fishing a frog real quick, just over some lilies. Drop the trolling motor. And let's get after it all right so if this stretch of pads looks familiar it's because we fished it this morning got a few blow-ups this morning here a little bit earlier so we're gonna see if there's some more fish that have moved in now with this higher sun some fish that are seeking shade from the bright sun now a lot of times i like to fish the thinner pads ones that aren't so clamped up together like as you can see right there in that pad field, there's just a jumbled mess of them. I like the more ones that are scattered, ones that are a little bit sparser, 
Now I'm gonna go into this pocket right here. It's just to the right of that bow launch right there. Nice and close. I can't go too far right now because he's not gonna be that long at Academy. So I'm gonna have to make the most efficient use of my time and just see if I can get a couple blow ups. Oh, I saw that back up. Uh, there's all those turtles. Look at that. This place is a turtle factory. I wish it was a bass factory. All right, we got some good looking stuff coming up right here. We got this shaded point of these pads. They've got a little log sticking up right there. I really like this. Let's see if we can get one. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, dude, he just clobbered it. Oh, oh no. What happened was the frog came over the lily right after he hit it. And so the frog was out of the water. Let's see if we can, oh, that was a good fish too. That was a really nice bass. Oh man. There he is. Come on, stay on baby. Oh, stay on. Stay on, stay on. Oh, stay on. I don't know if he might be off. I don't know. Oh, looks like he came off. Oh, no, he's still on there. He's still on there. Good fish, good fish, good fish. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at that. That is what I'm talking about. Awesome. I didn't even see the blow up. I looked back and... My frog had gone away. But look, he ate it. Look at that. He choked that frog. He wanted it. That's a Booyah Pad Crasher Jr. And the fish just hammered it. But that's how you want to hook him right there. He got him in the roof of the mouth like that. It's not a bad fish. Awesome. I'm going to take a picture and send it to my dad. He's going to be jealous. That's awesome. The frog fishing is... 100% my favorite kind of fishing to do. It's just so exciting to see that blow up and rake them out through the pads like that. It's just awesome. Uh, let's see if we can get one more before my dad comes back. So I'm gonna make a few casts over these lilies in the back of here and see if we can get a blow up or two. Oh, there he is. Stay on, baby, stay on. Yes, that's a good fish. That's a nice bass right there. That is a good, good bass getting a boat, boy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That is awesome. Look at that. Nice, nice fish. Man, that's awesome. That is so cool. Wow. That's a really good fish. It's probably a two pound fish. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and look at that. Again, another one just choked. Absolutely choked. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love this frog fishing. Looks like Marshman Mass on his back. So, good thing we stayed close. Productive 30 minutes. We got three blow ups, landed two of them, both of which were keepers. So, that was a fun fun little deal and we got them all on frogs which is just awesome there is no more fun way to catch a bass than on a frog it's just it'll it'll make your knees turn to jelly oh there he is there he is, stay on. Yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Boom! Right there, we got one more just before Marshman made it back to the dock. <laughs> that's awesome. Another frog bass. They are. I uh, caught three and I had one other blow up. Wow. Yep. I caught one that was probably 2.2. 2.2, really? Yeah. Wow. I got you some uh, health food. All right, so at Academy, I bought some crappie nibbles. And in case you're wondering, these are not for human or pet consumption. Phew, oof. 
They stink. Now my buddy Jeff told me he caught some under here. So obviously I'd be an idiot not to try it, but it's always, always, always difficult to catch somebody else's fish. And Jeff went up and fished Lake St. John up in the Delta area and had a really good trip. And he said this is what they did. They did a lot of tight lining. Which Jeff, Jeff's got a lot of experience with anyway. Oh, oh no. Oh, it is a fish. Yeah, it is. Oh, dude. It's nice. a big slab sockelet. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> dude, that is sweet. He wrapped me around something. I felt him hit, and then uh, then he wrapped around something. That's awesome. You gonna help me? <laughs> you, you got stabbed again. <laughs> Dude, that is sweet. We are not throwing these back. No, no, no. We're going to eat those. Good. We're going to eat those. Nice. Let go. All right, so I'm fishing a an electric chicken Bobby Garland on a 1 16th ounce uh, H2O Express jig head. So you know what to do. Yeah, you chuck it up under there. Better than that. And then uh, let it fall. And then... There we go. Oh, oh, big nice slab. Fish, nice big fish. slab. Nice. Oh, shoot. I got one. Get him, Joel. <laughs> Does that really count? So if you saw the previous video I did with Jeff, these crappie nibbles are essential. He completely convinced me that day. He was schooling me until I started using the nibbles. I always swore it didn't matter, but they definitely do matter, 100%. That one hit me on the initial drop. So did that one, so did that one. Ooh, that's a good fish, Joel. Look at this slab. I don't know if I'm gonna land him. This is a slab, dude. Look at this fish. I'm a break. Ooh, man, that's a slab. That's a good fish. Wow. Dude, this is wow. This is awesome. Can we keep this one? Yeah, keep that one. All right, this is, you know, for in here, this is, that's a good soccer lay. There he is. There he is, Joel. Uh oh. <laughs> I caught one of Joel's. Get him, Joel. Get him, Joel. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah, he's good. No, you don't reel. There you go. You pick him up with your hand. Nice. Oh, there's one. Oh, goodness. That's a good fish. Holy Toledo. No, it's a big old sockele. That's a slab. Look at this guy. Oh, I hope I get him in. He's going crazy. Look at this. I can't even turn him. I wonder if it's a bass. I cannot even turn this fish. Dude, he took me right around that, took me right around, oh, I'm wrapped all around that piling. I know, and I'm rubbing on that piling. Dude, I cannot turn, look at this, look at this fish. Joel, look at this fish. Get the net, get the net, get the net, hurry up. You gonna lip him? Oh, look at this sockele. Look at this sockele. No wonder I couldn't turn him. Dude, dude, look at this. Look at this fish. That may be my biggest sockele ever. I don't know. That's a big, big, big fish. Look at this. Look at this fish. That is a tank. Oh, there he is. That didn't take long. Dude, if you get it up under there, it's a fish. Dude, if one would count that, 
Oh, there he is. All right, on a small side, but he's a keeper. They are just stacked. Silly, silly. Man, we don't catch cyclic like this in uh, the spawn. Oh, man, that was awesome. He smoked it. He's not even that big. Boy, did he smoke it. He stopped it on a dime. He's not a trophy, but he's big enough. Oh, there he is. Ooh, you saw him throw up the nibble? Ah, he's a little bigger. He's gonna make it. He is a keeper. So I had to go do a radio interview, and Joel caught a few fish while I was doing that. But I reeled all my line in, now I gotta get it back out. So look, I'll readily admit, I'm not a jig and pole expert at all. In fact, I hardly ever do this. And I mentioned my buddy Jeff Brule earlier. We did this previously in a video. I'll link to it here. And he kind of taught me what to do. He taught me this technique. And it's definitely paying off today. And what we're doing, we're just flipping way up under this dock here. It seems like the farther you get under the dock, the more chance you have of success. Those fish are way up under there with these sunny bluebird conditions. Letting it fall and just kind of dragging it out. Most of them are hitting on the initial drop, but some are hitting on the drag. Just really a fun way to fish. Very, very fun. There he is. Dude, you called it. There he is. Nice. Is he big? <laughs> he holds it with his mouth. That's a keeper. I mean, he's not, he's not massive, but he's a keeper. Ow! Why did... Dude, you, you got injured today. Dude, you see this? Yeah, I see it. Look at, look at the blood. Dude, how does that look? Man, that's nice. <laughs> From a fish? <laughs> so I've been doing radio, telephone calls, <laughs> and Joel is just, Joel oh, is just killing him. He's oh, killing him. Every cast. Oh, look at this. He's a small one, but little guys have to eat too. Now he's actually nicer than you thought. That's a keeper fish. Are you strictly uh, dragging or are you bumping it? Ow! Dude, you're incredible. Hold up. First time handling a fish? <laughs> There's one. There's one. Nope, it's a bass. <laughs> it's a baby bass. There he is. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's a good fish. Dude. <laughs> that's a good fish. Oh, I hope I get him. No, it's a, it's a sockele. Definitely a sockele. Oh, he's digging, he's digging. Oh, it's a catfish. Oh. <laughs> Actually, a decent catfish. Boat There's one. Oh, First cast. Whoa, hang on. First cast. I don't know if you call it a cast, but it's a fish right away. Hey, you wanna put that <laughs> you wanna put that fish in a live well for me? <laughs> I'll show you Gotta unwrap the tip. Oh he hit me on the way down. My line would never go out. <laughs> My line would never go out. He was suspended. He's wearing his suspenders. Get over here, buddy. All right, so remember the day started out, we were gonna have a challenge, see which bait produced more fish. Would it be a fluke? Would it be a floating worm? Well, the fluke won, but that whole concept went out the window. We got on that hot sockele action. Let me tell you, it was fantastic. We've been fishing this river six years. I've never seen it that good ever. Now we normally fish sockeye here only during the spawn. This is the first time we've done it when it's not the spawn. But those fish were up under those docks in that shade, but they were still definitely feeding. A couple important keys was getting way down to the bottom and also using those crappie nibbles. Big, big, big difference. I tried a few times with that one, couldn't get a bite. You gotta use those crappie nibbles. So the only bad thing about the whole day, we still have the bathtub ring and it's a whole lot worse. 
But I've got some sock later clean when I get home. Joel's gonna be cleaning the boat.